Mustang and Gary Rogers Tirana behind him. And they're off, and Moffat snakes it off the line, and here he is with Bill Ward on the outside, proving he is the two runner. the left-hander and wait for it. Here they come. Moffat on the inside and he has taken the lead. Phil Ward in second place. Richards drops into third. Dunlop loop for the first time. Caught out by that time was Alan Grice. But on to the back part of the circuit and it's Moff in front of the Federation shedding on to the track. Great start by John McCormack in the big B12 Jaguar. He's right up there in fifth place and made a sensational start. This Moffat in the lead for the first time as they go on this 20 lap race. Third round. Park. The car that's running sixth at the moment is Gary Rogers' car, but didn't practice at all yesterday. And he's come from the rear of the grid. And just look at the uh, the shot that Rogers has made. There's John McCormick right behind him in the Unipart number eight car. Onto the straightaway one more time, and it's 19 laps to go, one down, and Moffat over top of the hill in second place. Moving right up on his tail pipe now, and I think he's going to harass him over the distance as Phil Ward. Let's take a look at the point standings in the uh, Australian Sports Sedan Championship as we go through onto the back part of the course. And Tony Edmondson is the series leader on 12 points, locked in second place. Phil Ward of New South Wales and Jim Richards of Victoria on nine apiece. Graham Winnicott of number five in the Chevy Monza. And in fifth place overall, Alan Grice on four points. Edmondson hasn't run a race yet, but he's come second in both. The first race was won by Phil Ward at Oran Park. The second race by Jim Richards at uh, Winton. But uh, by sheer consistency, two seconds, it's the Tasmanian driver, Edmondson, who survived that fiery crash in the Alfa Romeo last year, who was leading the championship. And this then is a crucial race, very crucial as far as possible. Oh, and he's really being counted there by Ward. He says, I've got a bit more power than you, Al. get by, but Moffat gets into gear going up there hooked up coming up over the top into the bottom turn and look at Richards now on the inside of Ward takes second place away Big Jim on the move through Dunlop Loop the right hander and now Richards up to put the pressure on Moffat Ward drops back into third place and right behind him is Tony Edmondson in the Alfetta well Moffat I believe is trying to hold the pace of the race a little bit uh, he's in front and he can dictate what's going on the tyres are going to play a very important role here as the race rolls on Down to uh, Rothman's right-hander, Richards down through the gears, right on Moffat. Well, on the outside, that's not the place to park if he, unless he's got uh, plenty of horsepower. And he's going to race it in here with Moffat, and there's no room when Moffat moves out against the wall here. The two of them locked together. Now it's the horsepower race up the straightaway, side by side, door handle to door handle. And Richards on the outside takes the lead, going up over the top, into the left-hander, and we'll see Richards now come out leading the race. Now it's excursion onto the infield, but he rejoins the race with Big Jim. Listen to those V8 draw around Dunlop onto the back part of the course and Moffat back in second. And then right back behind them would come Tony Edmondson. I think Richards is getting a little bit of his pro car experience here to work and he's really pulled a good tactical move there on Moffat. Edmondson forced wide then with Ward went on, but Edmondson is now front right back, running in fourth place. He's back in about the first ten, that's all. So a very disastrous outing for him, taken wide by Ward. It wasn't Edmondson's fault, but he's back in the field. And we now have uh, the BMW Turbo of Alan Grice. And the car we're watching, car number eight, John McCormick, just behind him in fourth place. And they're the ones chasing the leading two. But look at Gary, Gary Rogers has come through from the rear of the group job. That's been the drive of the race so far from Gary Rogers. And I tell you, that I don't think his charge is finished yet. Here he comes, right from the back of the grid, and has he got a point to prove today? Greater Pacific Pioneers going round the back part of the course. Big Jim Richards. He started in eighth place, Gary Rogers, the last of the big cars, and that really is phenomenal progress, helped by the fact that two of the leaders went off. But uh, still a remarkable effort. So after four laps, um, car 15, Jim Richards in the lead from Alan Moffat in 25, and car 34. Gary Rogers has moved up so far, then car number eight in fourth place, John McCormack in the V12 Jag, car number seven, Alan Grice in the turbocharged BMW, and Tony Edmonton, despite having gone off in uh, dodging Bill Ward, is up in sixth place, just ahead of car number 41, Mike Griffin in the Datsun. They're the top seven. Jim Richards making it look ever so easy, and it's not easy see the amount of work he and the pressure that he had to put on Alan Moffat to get by. Steely face, the eyes just stare out through the cockpit. Jim Richards is shaky, but enormous horsepower of these cars. And uh, Amaru Park is uh, not Australia's most forgiving racetrack, and I'm sure Bobby Morris would agree with me there. 
maybe the least restful racetrack for them. Get a chance to back off at all anywhere, or at least relax. Well, it is the least restful, and also shows up any deficiencies in the cars because. An ill-handling car can do a, quite a quick lap, but it can't maintain it here because the tyres just overheat. There's a great battle going on there between your car, Alan Bryce, your team car, is really hounding John McCormick in the very low, very wide and very powerful Jaguar V12. But now it's turbocharged, small engine against normally aspirated big engine. The big engine certainly gets away quick with this here torque, but the turbo builds up. Now the... What, two litres capacity that uh, Alan has with his uh, BMW or yes. 1.8? What size a, are you running? It's a two litre, 16 valve engine uh, with a turbocharger, a single turbocharger, and it really comes on in a hurry. So it's not the, the big smooth power of the V8, but it's more sudden horsepower. And this is uh, the difficulty that Alan Bryce has encountered here in his first drive of the car. Talking of sudden things, it looks like Alan Moffat might be uh, suddenly passed because uh, he's under a great deal of pressure from, uh, from Rogers up very close. The two cars going to there. Close up the top part of the circuit. Mump just pulled away a little bit. It doesn't. Uh, Rogers going on coming down to Rothmans here on the right-hander. And from this point on, there'll be plenty of pressure on Alan Moffat from Gary Rogers. Moffat holding back in second, doing a good job. Richards is running away from them at this stage of the race. Onto them straight away one more time through Breville Corner. Bet you Pope Hill one more time and look at Rogers trying to set up here twice of it and just settles in right behind Alan Moffat. But I think Moffat is certainly going to have a ton of pressure on him and meanwhile Alan Grice is putting a stack on John McCormick. You may be wondering what Rogers is driving but that curious looking beast is in fact a Toronto. Flared guards, a different nose, and some high wing at the rear. Basically it's a Toronto. And the car that Alan is driving is a Chevy Monza and the car they're trying to catch is a Falcon, a lightweight Falcon of Jim Richards. But there's the Monza of Moffat as he comes down and look at Rogers try hard. Yes, he was. Moffat, of course, heading off uh, in June to Le Mans. And today he's after the win. But it's not going to be Le Win as Rogers now takes the outside running, but that's not going to work. Now Trotty peg back on the inside and try and take him. He can't do that. Sticks to the outside. You can't pass around there coming up to this next turn, which is Breville, the race sponsors. On the straightaway one more time. And just look at this great dice guy. He's sitting in behind, looking for a slingshot here as they come up the top of the hill. Maybe he pulled out too early then. He seemed to lose a bit of ground. He's trying the other side, but Alan Moffat won't let him through there. But it'll be interesting to see how they come over the hill. Bobby Morris, put yourself in Alan Moffat's shoes at the moment. Well, I think Moffat is um, obviously not as fast as Rogers, and he just has to drive a tactical race and try and hold, hold uh, Gary Rogers out. Gary Rogers is obviously a lot faster in some sections of the circuit. They have a little and a half left in the 20 lap race, so almost half left. Behind them, we have Alan Grice, uh, fairly lonely position with uh, Tony Edmondson now making a great effort. He's really gained a lot of ground and he is uh, in position where he'll be challenging Alan Grice very soon. You can see the gap there, and the car behind is uh, McCormick in the Jag, and behind him, Phil Ward, who went off the track and has made up an enormous amount of ground to get back in the race. Ward, who shared the front row of the grid with Moffat, was upset, feeling that he had in fact been faster and deserved pole position. But look at the big Monaro go as he gets right on the tail of the other car up the hill. Rogers, in the meantime, still hassling Alan Moffat. And I'll tell you what, uh, Moffat has held the pace up, or slowed the pace up that much, that Alan Grice has now caught up, John McCormick has caught up, and so does Tony Edmonds, and he's the race leader. Uh, glad he's not back a little further because there's going to be some hell of a race there with Moffat, Rogers, Alan Bryce in the Craven Mile car, and now Edmondson is riding this car. What a race, folks. Look, here it is. Alan Moffat, 25 in second place. Gary Rogers of Victoria now takes the outside line. Oh, a suicidal line. He doesn't know whether he can stay there. Moffat will give him room, but not, not very much. And whether or not... Oh, he's oh, not there. Edmondson. Came through like a stone out of a screenshot. Now watch Edmondson. He's the series leader. The boy has made the comeback. And the Alpha up north. And Phil Waters back in the at the back door. Needs more than a little federation up over the top and now into Dunlop Loop. Moffat takes the inside. Edmondson will just tack in behind him and now try and see if he can pass him on the inside, exiting that turn. Alan Grice is right in there, but Moffat uses and comes back onto the line and we have one heck of a race going here. Australia Sports Championship beat three, the first 20 lapper at Amaru Park. Ten laps gone, there'll be another 20 lapper and the best positions and the two races will determine who takes the point for today's team. You'd think the adrenaline wouldn't be pumping in there. There's Alan Moffat this time. We'll have to survive an outside charge here from Tony Edmondson. Edmondson now looks to the inside. It's a case of who's going to have the most amount of brakes left. 
in another couple of laps. Rogers is still in there, running back in uh, fourth place. And this time, zap, goes uh, Tony Edmondson. Takes Moffat on the inside and now advances into second. Moffat doesn't want to give up. This time, of, up the inside of him comes Phil Ward, right from the back of the field after running off the course. And Moffat has just dropped about four positions. I think he has trouble. He's been passed by everyone. Your on-the-spot analysis of what's happened with Alan Moffat. I'd say that Alan Moffat has been in a little bit of trouble. He's either has a tyre slowly deflating or um, a slight mechanical fault, which is obviously not uh, up to his practice time. What have you the Alfa Romeo, powered by the Repco V8, the racing engine V8 in there. He ran a similar car in the last year with the Catamania, a great motorsporting enthusiast for many years. McCormick just going through. Destroyed the car in a terrible accident uh, up at Surface Paradise last year. In fact, for a little while it was doubtful whether Tony himself would survive so severe with his burns, but he not only survived, he's back racing and he is leading this year's championship. He's come second in both the races so far and he's in second spot in this race. Jim Richards has cleared out in front in the Big M Falcon. There he goes. He must have taken on a couple of litres of milk the way he's going around there at the moment. But he has a long lead over Tony Edmondson who's doing all he can to try and catch up. And uh, Richards, in fact, now lapping some of the two-litre cars in the smaller category here, Minis, uh, the Toyota of Doug Clark, the Celine. I think Jim would be disconcerted with his car at this time uh, to make sure that his tyres still have some life left at the end of 20 laps and uh, to hold up any challenges that may come from Tony Evans as the race progresses. There's the race leader, Jim Richards. Through Breville turn, onto the straightaway, one more time, seven laps remain in this first 20 lap heat of the Australian Sports Sedan Championship today at Amaru Park. And Jim Richards in the race lead, and Tony Edmondson, the series leader in second place. One heck of a race coming up for this second heat. Well, Moffat's in front, that's a good place to be because it's dynamite behind this, comes like a bump again, and took a big bump coming out of the uh, Dunlop loop that time, but he's still there in third place, and he's the real danger to these two big fellows out front. A lot of smoking of tyres, mainly at Oh, the Edmondson's gone! Oh! Tony Edmondson has been spun, just clipped by Phil Ward. 60 degrees. And he's going to have to do this one from the back. You'll notice him, he's already pulling it back round to come into the back of the grid. Alan Moffat has big Jim Richards right on his tail pipe. Edmondson starts running again. And up at the top of Bitchu Pave Hill, still Alan Moffat, the race leader, and right behind him is Jimmy Richards. And that's a great break for these two because that spin by Edmondson slowed the other cars down, and there's a big gap back before we come to Ward and the others. They're just going round now, but it's a two-car race, and what a two -some. I think Richards is a bit anxious to get on with it. Well, he doesn't like going from the back, I don't think. Uh, he's waving his nose there, and uh, Moffat had tyre trouble in the earlier race, and dropped back to sixth place, determined to stay in front and try to make that rather slim. Chevy Monda look as wide as possible. Rich is now taking an outside line, and he's got a very light car. He's going to break as late as he possibly can, but Moffat forced all him, takes up the road, goes as wide as he can. And Rich is now looking for an inside line. He has to be content for a little while to stay back, but he's squeezing his way through. He's hit Moffat. Moffat has had to uh, check the car, has lost a lot of time there. The alternative was to go into the defensive rebel, and now Richards is in front. Moffat has dropped back a long way to get to the car, but it'll be a very cranky Alan Moffat. In the, the car. car. It's out there, Bobby Morris. Well, I think that one of the cars is going to be in trouble shortly. It's the Unipar Jaguar. He's had a lot of body damage to the left rear of his car, and I believe a tyre is rubbing on the guard. I'll pick that up for you. It's about the fifth or sixth car. Back here it is, blowing the smoke. About to come under our camera there now. We'll pick that up with it. Next uh, shot we'll take down around Mazda, and here we pick it up. John McCall. The, the race, certainly in terms of original price. There goes the Craig Mile car about the BMW chasing the Jaguar. You can see the, the rearranged rear end of the car that Bobby Morris referred to. It's on the other side, which is a bit hard for us to pick up because he's uh, very well disguised from the camera angle. But John McCormick, the former gold star champion, running back in fifth place. Has the bodywork damage and is rubbing off the tire. The question of whether it's going to be, yes, it is. It's enough to put him into the pit. And up below it is the Jaguar. He goes into the pit. It's been a troubled car. Never really had the success ever imagined. I think that was Phil Ward's car that went by with the damage to the front. Probably the one that met with the Jaguar? Yeah, uh, no, I think Ward hit uh, Edmondson at that turn and spun Edmondson. I don't think there's enough body damage done to Ward's car to, to slow him down. It's only the front spoiler. Down through Mazda, Richards right in place in this race, followed by Alan Moffat. Well, Ward made up a lot of ground and Rogers behind him. Then Alan Grice after that. Those are the leading five. Big space to the rest of the field, though. 
Jackson and Mike Griffin, who started from the ninth place on the grid, who is running in sixth place. Bryce Just ahead Potts of and uh, Edmondson, who's made up a considerable amount of ground once more to be in midfield. Now the question is whether Phil Ward can make up uh, the distance to catch Alan Moffat. There's Richards coming over the top and down into Dunlop, then Moffat in the Federation Monza. The next is Phil Ward in the Channel 10. Doesn't win any ratings either, let me tell you, on the front spoiler after clipping Edmondson, but as they move on to the back part... Thanks, Bever Hamry, you're right. Uh, one driver who was in a lot of strife there was Gary Rogers. He made up a lot of ground and got it all squirrely and sideways. But here's a fellow who never gets it sideways, unless it's in the wet and he can handle that as well. That's Jim Richards. Car 15 with 15 laps to go. And Ward is certainly out for victory. He wants to get by Moffat. And he's certainly made up ground. He's driving car number two. We'll pick, we'll stay on this dice. Bobby Morris, uh, if looking at the races you've seen it so far with Alan Moffat taking uh, Phil Ward with a, an obvious horsepower advantage or disadvantage. Well, Ward is getting a very aggressive driver and he's more likely to overheat his tyres uh, in the aggressive sideways style of, of his driving and I think Moffat is, is just uh, running fairly cool. He's driving the car nice and straight but he's going to be under a lot of pressure from Phil Ward. OK, on down on the run now to Mazda Corner. Phil Ward zeroing in on Alan Moffat. One network ready to attack the shoulders as they come down to Mazda. And Moffat uh, doing a good job holding out. Just behind them is Gary Rogers, who's done a good job. And then right behind them, Alan Gross. We'll stay on this. This is good racing. A little more than 14 laps to go. starting to settle into a pattern. I don't think anyone is going to put any pressure on the race leader, Jim Richards. Uh, he had to come from behind after Alan Moffat won another of his famous starts. And Moffat holding down second. is holding down third. Then behind him going to the race. Tony Edmondson, by the way, is back into sixth place. I know he's still a fair way behind uh, Jim Richards, but he's got clear space between him and the fifth place getter, uh, Rice, and he's making up the ground pretty rapidly. What a frustrating run today. He's driven his heart out and, and been the innocent victim in, uh, in two accidents. He's leading the series, let us remind you, after the first two races, having come, and, come second in each. And it's Ward and the man leading this race, Richards, who have each won one race. Moffat is out to put some points on the board, and that's a close group going through there with uh, the turbo BMW of Alan Grice just comfortably far back. And Ford. Rogers putting a lot of pressure on Ward, and we could end up with some of these cars touching and leaving Richards well and truly on his own. Rogers letting him know that he wants to get by, and he's not so concerned whether Ward can pass Moffat, but he wants to get by Ward himself and then throw out the challenge to the leading car. Richards and uh, Moffat, and 15 seconds between Richards and the sixth place getter, Tony Edmondson. Not much between them up over the top of Bitcher Pave. One more time down in Dunlop Loop. And look at that little BMW getting up there. The two leaders against the five and six leaders of the other cars. True. Really performing incredibly. Probably a hard car to drive too, Bob, because of the fact that the power comes on and off a little more with the turbo rather than having the yes. torque torque. And really to get the horsepower that uh, is needed to stay with these cars, it has a turbocharger. And it's quite a lot more difficult to drive. Look at this race between Phil Ward, who's sideways, and Gary Rogers says, out of the way. I'm going to the outside, and that's no man's land, let me tell you. They'll get down there. He jumps on the binders. Alan Grice has arrived. The turbocharger in neutral position at this stage, and he'll fire it on the straightaway. Jim Richards, meantime, doing one heck of a job out in front. Moffat in second. Third is Phil Ward, and then uh, right behind Ward, we've got Rogers, who now pulls out on the inside. Thinks twice about that. The Arco guardrail jumped out almost that time, and Alan Grice on the brakes to make sure he does and overrun them at the top of the hill. It's obvious the BMW would like a long straight then. It really, you can see it winding up, Bobby. Yes, it, it appears to really like the, the long straights. And uh, I think on a long circuit, like Surface Paradise or Sandown Park, really give these big V8s a run for its money. 12 laps to go. Jim Richards increasing his lead slightly over Alan Moffat. It's now five and a half seconds. Then Phil Ward, right behind him, Gary Rogers, is the, the leader. And behind that group, and just uh, coming into the picture there, is Alan Grice just picks up a puff of dirt. Rogers pressing down that curious shovel nose, trying to gather up Phil Ward, who in turn is intent upon Moffat, and he's by him. Ward went wide, lost a bit of traction. He's also had the BMW go by, so now Ward, who looked like winning the race, or I hope that he might get by and throw out a challenge to the leader, is now dropping back. Edmondson has made up three seconds on the leader in the last two years. Incredible performance then by the Tasmanian, the man who almost died in a fiery crash of Surface Paradise last year, destroyed one alpha. 
Sean Elliott, his patron. Oh, ah, thanks a million. He's fifth. pulling out of the race, but... Uh, Phil Ward was the fifth rating driver as they went out, and now the sixth out of this race has run its course. So, to the pits. Race continues between now Gary Rogers, who has been the mover from the back mark, and he's got Alan Moffat uh, tucking down the inside of Moffat. Doing one heck of a job in this car is um, Gary Rogers. Look at this on the outside. I hope he's read the manual. You turn right here. And behind them is Alan Grice, who's looking for a way around the debris of these two touch. Oh, and Tony Edmonds and Alan is closing Grice up. Is through. And what he's happened? through. Grice is through. Rogers went wide, and Grice said thank you. Turned up the wick a bit more, and away he went, putting down 600 horsepower. Bearing his teeth with courage, and now he's out of the lock. The man he knows doesn't particularly like. He likes him, but he'd, he'd like to beat him better than he'd uh, like to stay behind him. And that's the way it is. Richard's way out in front, as you can see. Driving such a splendid race, we tend to forget him. Nine and a half laps to go for uh, the race leader, Jim Richards. For the benefit of Channel 7 viewers in Sydney, we point out to you that the telecast is running well behind schedule today because of the accidents involved. It seems absolutely certain we won't be able to bring you every lap of this race. We'll try and carry it through as long as we can for you. At the moment, we're on Alan Moffat and Alan Grice in the Craven Mile 7 BMW lining up Moffat. Rogers coming down the inside. Here's Grice caught out wide, and now Rogers going to do exactly the same thing oh, to Grice. Oh, 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 into the oh sorry about that. The wall. That's the... Well... Mr. Moffat and Mr. Grice have met once again. Fancy running into you, they'll say afterwards, or words that may be a little harsher. And that is the end of Alan Grice's chances of winning. Now, Gary Rogers saw all that happen, and there's no way Rogers is going to get caught on the outside of Moffat. Let me tell you, over the top. Now, do you see what's behind them? Oh, well, Tony Edmonds has right. moved right up the man Absolutely. he spun it early on. A phenomenal drive. That's in fourth place. Back up in that corner, Dunlop Quarter. This dice is really on. Edmondson will have the fire brief at this stage. He's been sat on the grass twice, not through uh, other cars. Moffat holding down second place. Jim Richards will go on and win this.